Once I read these four spiritual books, I made over a million dollars in online business and so can you. I've read hundreds of books about business, spirituality, relationships, and more. And once you've read all these books, you start to realize that there's some recurring themes and these themes are principles. You see, reading is good and all, but most of the time you don't need more books. You need to learn principles from the right books. So let me save you some time and tell you the four books you need to read to manifest more money in your life. The great thing too is that three of them are relatively short. Why is that? Because the truth is simple. And I say spiritual in quotations because some of these books you wouldn't consider spiritual. So let's get into it. If there's any spiritual book you need to read, let it be this one, The Kabbalion. Now, here's the thing about spiritual books. Most of them are interpretations and parables regarding universal principles that were passed down for generations. It's believed that the Bible, the Torah, the Quran, the Tripitaka, the Bhagavad Gita originate from the emerald tablets of Thoth or Thoth or Toth, however you want to pronounce it, but it doesn't really matter. Now, there's tons of debate about this, about the emerald tablets, and you can believe whatever you want to believe. It actually doesn't really matter in this case because all these holy books end up arriving at the same conclusions and principles when you analyze them together. The Kabbalion is what I would call a summation of these principles. The Kabbalion is about hermeticism and the hermetics originate their teachings from the emerald tablets and from science. You and your big words. Big hermetics and science are big words, huh? No, the ones before those, but those are big words. <laughs> We got some more big words, but we're gonna <laughs> define them. Hermetics are what you would call pantheistic. Pantheism is the belief that God is not a separate entity from everyone and everything else. It's the belief that God is within and part of everything in existence. Therefore, everything and everyone is connected. We have the ability to transform our reality just as God can change reality. Some of the greatest thinkers in all of human existence were pantheistic. People like Albert Einstein, Lao Tzu, the author of the Tao Te Ching and father of Taoism, Carl Jung, who's the father of modern psychology, Nikolai Tesla, and even Beethoven. They all have pantheistic beliefs. You've probably found my channel for my Kabbalion Wealth series. I made an entire playlist explaining the seven hermetic principles and how you can use them to get more money in your own life. And if you're gonna read any spiritual book, I'd be sure to read The Kabbalion. Once you understand and use the principles in this book, life just starts working out for some reason. That's one of my favorite. We each have our own copy. And you might be asking, why is this look so pristine and so taken care of? Because I take care of my stuff. Just because you read a book doesn't mean it has to be torn apart and blah, blah, blah. blah. That's what Don't you do, though. Judge you us. like that. Don't it's judge us. It's because the book is well lived. Okay, it's been through a lot of experiences. You're right, you know. Next, we have two books that I'm going to count as one because they cover the same topic, the topic of fear. Fear is a very powerful frequency and it can stop you from being who you know you can be. For instance, fear stops people from putting a message or content into the world and then no one knows who they are and then they don't make any money. You may fear the judgment of two people, two people, your parents. And that prevents you from ever doing anything to benefit yourself. If you can't handle the judgment of two people, you'll never be able to get rich because no matter what you do, people will judge you. They'll have bad things to say. They hate on you. They'll tell you all sorts of stuff. I get comments of people hating on me and telling me all type of stuff that you're no real teacher and you're this and you're that and you're that and you're this or whatever thing. People don't want my wife to talk if she's not on camera. Screw you guys. She gonna talk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Enjoy it. So if you can't handle that stuff, if you can't handle judgment because you're afraid of judgment, it's going to stop you. But you're not only going to get hate and criticism in this stuff. People are also going to show you love because there has to be a balance. You can't get hate unless you get love too. If you're afraid of criticism, you will stop yourself from winning. So these two books, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill and The 50th Law by 50 Cent will teach you about conquering fear. Outwitting the Devil was thought to be so controversial that it wasn't published until 40 years after Napoleon Hill's death. You could listen to this book on YouTube, but I suggest you actually pick up a copy, actually read it, highlight things, 
The book will tell you the major fears that hold you down and hold society down. Some of the things said in this book are indeed controversial, and if it came out in 1938, they would just would have. I don't know if Napoleon Hill was in a state that was about the death penalty, but they just would have shipped him to one and got rid of him. There are some things in it that are controversial, but the truth will set you free, but at first it'll piss you off. And when Hill is talking about the devil, he's not talking about some personified being with horns and a tail. The devil is the concept of negative energy in the universe. The devil claims that he basically owns 98% of the world and only 2% of people escape him. He gains control of the minds of people by occupying the unused space in their mind and basically does his work through a process called drifting. And drifting is pretty much when you don't have conscious control of your mind. So if you're scrolling all day on Instagram, that's drifting for instance. There's a lot of explanation of drifting, but I find that it's a real thing and you combat it through your level of self-control. You know what that sounds like? Mm. Like it sounds like a process that you kind of go through when you're doing meditation, like watching and witnessing the mind, like the ideas that come to your mind versus like getting drifted by those thoughts mm -hmm. and like the practices, like actually just witnessing it and being present as opposed to drifting with it. So it's kind of like a yeah. similar practice yeah drifting drifting makes you essentially lose consciousness in a sense you don't even know what's happening and there's some elements of meditation that are like that but meditation is not drifting drifting is something you don't necessarily want to have happen it is loss of control of your consciousness in a sense so for instance People can go on Instagram, for instance, and scroll, 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 and two hours pass by and they have no clue how it happened. That's a example of drifting, but there's tons of examples of it in the book, in the book. Drifting is one of the ways negative energy seeps in. And the devil talks about how he has six clever ways to get people to do what he wants. And they all have to do with fear. They're the fear of poverty, the fear of criticism, the fear of sickness, the fear of love lost, old age, and death. The most powerful of these fears is the fear of poverty and the fear of death. So that's why I talk about if you're in survival mode and you fear poverty, it makes it a lot easier for negative energy to get a grip of you because you're only thinking about survival. You're thinking about poverty. Even if you have money and you're in a lack mentality, you're thinking about going broke all the time. This will not create a fantastic situation for you to manifest things. So Outwitting the Devil is a really important book to read if you want to start joining the 2% of people who aren't governed by fear. The other book about fear is The 50th Law by 50 Cent and Robert Green. I love this book. I read it in university and every now and then I come back to it. It's a very short read. 50 Cent, you might think 50 Cent is not a spiritual individual or like why would I have a book about 50 Cent in this or a book 50 Cent careful wrote. Be careful about talking about that fitty. Huh? Be careful about talking about that fitty. Oh. He's very petty. No, I'm saying good things about 50. I don't need the pettiness. <laughs> All right. So 50 Cent is obviously a very empowered guy. The indicator of a high vibrating person is their ability to change their reality. 50 Cent is fit. He's a multimillionaire. He has influence. He speaks well of himself and he alchemized the situation of a kid with no parents. Okay, in Queens, New York, selling drugs into becoming one of the biggest rap artists of all time. That is spirituality at work. A lot of people, they might tell you what spirituality is and all these other things like they're more spiritual because they don't eat meat or they're vegan or they wear robes or they meditate 10 hours a day or whatever it is. And they make you feel bad at the fact that you don't do these things and that they're more spiritual than you. But it's not the case. They are only spiritual, not just spiritual. They are more spiritual, I should say, if they have the ability to change their reality. This 50th law book is a great practical read about overcoming fear and transforming your reality because that is the real spiritual work. You need to be an alchemist in this life, which is an honorable mention, by the way, that's a good book too. But if you're an entrepreneur, you need to be an alchemist. If you're someone who has information, skills, or knowledge to sell, but you can't get started or you're stuck, I can help you cancel out emotional charges like fear so you can reach to the next level of your life. And this is one of the many things I teach in the next realm. And at this current date, I have nine more spots available at the current price. So link is in the description below for you to get involved. Third on our list is Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. 
Steal Like an Artist is basically telling you that there's nothing new under the sun. To this day, there are people interpreting the Bible more than 2,000 years after its existence and giving people new and novel perspectives. There are people interpreting the Quran, the Kabbalion, everything, because there's nothing new under the sun, just adaptations of things that already exist. I originally come from the music business, and every great artist is a combination of their inspirations. They borrow from these inspirations, they combine them together, and they create something new. This creates a new and novel perspective, new and novel art, new and novel businesses. I can interpret and teach lessons that others can't because of my experience as an artist, because of my experience as a kid who didn't have a bunch of money, a kid who almost died at four years old in a hospital, a kid that had to warm up by the stove in the winter because mom couldn't pay the gas bill that month, and eventually I became a top 1% earner. I've read tons of books i've bet spent over probably three hundred thousand on coaching and mentorship i'm just a combination of a bunch of different people's learning including my own life experiences and maybe a wife yes her too <laughs> <laughs> This is what steal like an artist is about. You need to learn how to absorb information, apply it, and then make it novel by combining it with other things you've learned and your own experiences. Even when it comes to business or content, copy people at first because if you do it too long and you're just really biting people's stuff forever you're gonna get called out and people are just gonna go where the source is if they can find it but why copy people because when you copy something you start to understand how it works and when you understand how it works you can make it different it's the whole thing of you need to learn the rules so you can break the rules. So read Steal Like an Artist. And that's another one of those books that doesn't sound like a spiritual book, but every book is a spiritual book because spirit is in everything. When it comes to money, you don't want to be desperate. You don't want to chase it. Money is like a woman and income is a feminine vector. Watch my Use Feminine Energy to Get Rich video to learn more about that. Now, despite what a rapper may say, you know, you don't want to be chasing the bag, you know? I'm chasing the bag. Put that all in the bank. Put that all in the safe. I'm always paying. Hey, get in the bag. I'm chasing the bag. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Call me the ad lib queen. Ad lib queen. But let, but let me ask you something, okay? When was the last time something was chased and it was a good thing? <laughs> Okay, when's the last time something was chasing after you and it was a good thing? Okay, for 90% of the time, if you're chasing something, it's because it's running away from you, <laughs> right? Now, money is like a woman. You want to seduce the money. And that's where Robert Greene's bestseller, The Art of Seduction, comes into play, which she stole from me from the longest time and I had to come you look for my book. Gave it to me out of the kindness of your heart? You teethed my book you gave it to me actually i saw it in your childhood bedroom and i said oh look a book that's not being used because the last i checked True. we lived in a whole other location <laughs> and then right, i think so. i brought up something and then it was almost like you were gifting it to me that's the vibe i got from you mm. but that could just me be that could just be me being a woman and falling for the illusion that I create for a man because you're so great to me. Well, I was going to say the expectation of feminine energy, but, you know, you brought it to a different spot. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to manifesting, you need to attract things. It's an incoming vector. You need to learn how to attract money, how to be attractive, how to seduce. If you are seductive, money will like you. And I don't mean seductive in like a sexual sense. There's an energy to seduction. Anything you have brought to you, you have seduced it to you. And I talk about this more in my, if you can't f you won't get rich video. I talk about the similarity between seduction and sales in that video because they are basically the same thing. And you're not gonna make any money if you can't sell anything. Selling something that's based in universal principles that you're courageous enough to put into the world because you've canceled out fear and it combines all your learning and experiences into a phenomenal product. Then you learn how to sell because you understand seduction and then you get paid. With that being said, those are my top four spiritual books for making money. You know what I realize about people in books? They get all motivated. They get all inspired while reading it. And then they don't use that energy 
to actually apply the knowledge that they read about. So, like, you have a whole bunch of people going out there, and they may be reading, like, a whole bunch of books, but Mm. are they applying the knowledge even in their own way of, like, okay, DIYing things? Like, how do I make this fit with my reality? How How do I use this knowledge to my benefit? And I think that's where we get lost in the sauce with books these days because everyone wants to say they read a book, but no one can tell you examples of how they applied it or how it applies to your life. Yeah. Unless I, you're you. I call it, I call it like cannibalizing the mind. So like you read, you like you read a whole bunch of things and you like you consume all this information, but then it stops you from even moving. It kind of like eats your brain is, is how I would call it because too much, too much knowledge will prevent you from moving so like people that only live in the mental realm which is what a lot of reading and knowledge is if you only live in the mental realm you won't manifest things into your life into your physical reality because you actually still need to do things despite what other people are going to tell you on the internet and say you you don't need to do anything to manifest it's not true because we live in three planes physical mental spiritual so if you want something to come into the physical plane right there's going to be there's going to be a physical element involved the mental plane is the cause but the physical plane is the effect and there's still physical plane work you're going to have to do even reading is a physical plane action you understand that is affecting your mental plane that eventually affects the spiritual plane you need to apply your knowledge and that's why i talk about i say you don't need to read a, a gajillion books even though it, it's it's great you know reading is great but you don't need to read a gajillion books you just you need to know the right principles when you know the right principles you just act on the principles the bible the Kabbalion, a lot of holy texts are just principles told in a lot of parables and stories that people have to decipher but when you move from principles you can adapt around those principles for yourself but they'll always work that's why they're principles and with that being said after we told you you don't have to read a bunch of books read those four books (laughs) but the first step to making money in the best way that's fulfilling and aligned for you is to really know your value so i built a free values tool to help you out the link is in the description below we'll see you in the next one for me and wifey Peace. Peace.